I want to welcome you all on this beautiful day in the Bay Area as we gather together virtually to worship and to uh, be with each other. Uh, I want to remind everybody that you will have an opportunity to interact, which is really the uh, substance of St. John's. Uh, later in the service, uh, we'll ask you to unmute to identify yourselves uh, for the birthday anniversary prayers and also uh, during the peace and at the end of the service, we invite you to, to hang on uh, after the service is over just to chat if you would like. But for now, uh, we ask you all to put your uh, computers, iPhones, iPads, other devices on mute as we uh, as Ben leads us in the opening hymn. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah saying, he was not abandoned to Hades nor did his flesh experience corruption. This, Jesus, God raised up, and of that, all of us are witnesses. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Be to God. Please join me in reading in unison Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have that said to the Lord, Lord, you are my oh, Lord, God. my good above all other. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. Their libations of blood I will not offer, nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. O oh God, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not fall. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Reading from the first Peter, blessed be the God, Father, Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us to new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into the inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, though perishable, is tested by fire may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. 
Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with the indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be Thanks to God. To Is Susan on? Susan Pierpoint? All right, gotta unmute yourself, Susan. <laughs> the Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve was not with him when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answers him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen me and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that 
and that through believing, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Welcome to part two of the Stations of the Resurrection. This series is based on a simple premise, an Easter life, a life a filled second. with joy, vision and purpose does not simply happen. A resurrection life results from a journey. It requires risky steps, effort, discipline, the church got it right when they made Easter a season, not just a day. Our tradition embraces the reality that it takes time for a given message to sink in, even the Easter message. And so immersing ourselves in the various experiences and stories that happened to the disciples that led to the spread of good news throughout the world is something worth exploring. Last week, we arrived at the station of shared story, realizing that the dis discipline of hearing another story and sharing ours can bring us to the surprising presence of Christ. My hope is that you had a chance to stay at that station in some way over the last week and that you continue to return there again and again. Today, we arrive at another station of the resurrection, honest, doubt. I could have easily called this the station of self-awareness or self-acceptance as Thomas expressed what he was truly feeling. It could have been called the station of absolute trust given how risky it is to question. I could have called this the station of transparency given how honest and revealing Thomas was about what he thought and what he felt. I could also call it the station of personal calling. After all, Thomas is waiting for his moment, his path, his time, his answers, and not someone else's. It's a station where we meet ourselves and in so doing, we meet God. Put simply, Thomas knows who he is and is true to where he is. He does not embrace the testimony even of his fellow disciples. He only embraces something wholeheartedly, that love and purpose he longs for, if it comes to him. He knows what he needs and God provides it. This could also be called the station of those on the edge or those who feel left out. It could be considered the station of the fringe element which honestly is a station for every reflective person because the only alternative is conformity or the opiate of the masses or mob mentality. Thomas models for us that God will meet us where we are with all our doubts and questions. Doubts and questions are a way to bring ourselves to the table, to inject ourselves into the conversation to make the gospel true and relevant to us. I love Thomas because he models living on the edge. He lives on an event horizon. An event horizon is an astronomical term. It's that spot, that moment when an object in space is neither in nor outside of the gravitational field of a larger object. It could escape the pull or yield to it. Thomas, for me, is the poster child of all of us who feel on an event horizon, not quite in and not quite out. I love him for that. I'm glad he is there because life is filled with those event horizons where we are neither in nor out. It is a place of hesitation. In fact, the English word doubt comes from the Latin dubitare which means quite literally to hesitate in the face of two possibilities. So this station of what I am calling honest doubt must be God's favorite place to meet us. 
Actually, come on now. It's the only place God can fully meet us. And in case you haven't noticed, it's the place we invite ourselves to every week in the service when we pray to God what has been called the Collect of Purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. This is misnamed. It's not about purity. It's about honesty. It's about truth. It could be called the Collect of Transparency or New Beginning because we can only really find our way if we first know where we are. In fact, why not call it the Prayer of Thomas? Because it's a prayer about starting where we are with all of our questions, all of our doubts, all of our feelings and thoughts. God meets us there, right there. Frederick Biegner said this, without somehow destroying me in the process, how could God reveal himself in a way that would leave no room for doubt? If there were no room for doubt, there would be no room for me. If you don't have doubts, you're either kidding yourself or asleep. Doubts are the ants in the pants of faith. They keep it alive and moving. Yet, yet, the historical church has often tried to diminish, even condemn doubt and questioning. Even this account today in John is filled with judgment. That may be because scholars now feel that John and Thomas were at odds with one another. They know this because Thomas also wrote a gospel which many scholars say should be the fifth gospel. It's an amazing piece of literature and wisdom, and it was left out, much like Thomas was left out of the initial appearance of Jesus. His gospel was excluded from the traditional faith documents known as the Bible. Why? Because, and this is my commentary, because those in power wanted to organize around an agreed upon theology, fearing that personal exploration would lead to chaos, or more accurately, take away the hierarchical power of those in charge. Irenaeus, Bishop of Lyons in the year 180, said that these documents, and I quote, these secret writings were an abyss of madness and blasphemy, blasphemy against Christ. Yes, but tell us how you really feel, Irenaeus. Thomas's gospel, and other early writings were finally excluded when in 367, Athanasius, a bishop in Alexandria, issued the list of 27 accepted New Testament books in the Easter letter and referred to them as canonical. Interestingly enough, his Old Testament canon did not include the book of Esther, which never mentions God. So we all should know about what became one of the biggest and significant book burnings in history. Church leadership labeled them as fake news, insisting that they all be destroyed. It is believed that an Egyptian monk disobeyed the order, found a large six foot high cistern and filled it with these heretical documents. He then buried them near a place called Nag Hammadi. A part of our history went literally underground. Then in 1945, two brothers, while digging for fertilizer, heard a thump and uncovered this cistern filled with these documents, including the Gospel of Thomas. So scholars now believe that the Gospel of John cannot be understood without the Gospel of Thomas because they shaped each other and, are create, and, and created an important tension between belief, structure, and hierarchy on the one hand and profound personal experience and insight on the other. John elevated the common belief and hierarchy, emphasizing that light is in Jesus alone. And Thomas balanced that 
by elevating one's own God-given capacity, seeing that the light of God is in each human heart. In the Gospel of Thomas, it reads, Jesus said, Let him who seeks continue seeking until he finds. When he finds, he will become troubled. When he becomes troubled, he will be astonished, and he will rule over all. When you come to know yourselves, then you will be known, and you will realize that it is you who are the sons and daughters of the living Father. But if you will not know yourselves, you dwell in poverty, and it is you who are that poverty. If you bring forth what is in you, you will be saved. If you do not bring forth what is within you, what you do not bring forth will destroy you. Elaine Pagels, professor at Princeton, told this story during a, conf a conference at the Zen Center in San Francisco where the Gospel of Thomas was discussed. A visiting Zen master said, quote, I would never have had to become a Buddhist had Thomas been included in the New Testament. <laughs> Budapalians, take heart. It's part of our buried history, which is now risen from the grave. Just as the historical church lost part of its soul for centuries, buried in a cistern in Nag Hammadi, so too we can so easily seek the comfort and conformity instead of the challenge of self-discovery. We live in challenging times, to say the least. We see people giving in into forces of fear, greed, and anger. We also see people discovering amazing qualities that have been buried, now being set free to spread love, justice, and peace to this world. What forces are tugging at you right now? This station of the resurrection today invites us to meet at the event horizon of who we are and who we will become. What orbit will you choose? Which ideas will sway you? Who do you want to be? Who will you become? What will you do? Who are you? May this season of Easter be a time not only of celebrating the risen Christ, but also be a time when, like a long-buried cistern in Nag Hammadi, our true selves arise to meet this day. Amen. I invite you on our continuing journey through the Stations of the Resurrection as we arrive next week at yet another station.
Prayers of the people form four. In peace, let us pray saying, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican communion and primate of Japan. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Mark's Berkeley, St. Mark's Palo Alto, and St. Mark's Crockett. For Michael Curry, our presiding bishop, Mark Andrus, our bishop, and the clergy and staff of St. John's. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal those suffering in, in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. For all healthcare and essential workers, for those with the coronavirus, those who have died and all who mourn, for those working tirelessly on our behalf to keep our infrastructure running, for anyone in isolation and those living in close quarters, for the poor, persecuted, the sick, all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and those in danger, that they may be relieved and protected. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for the needs and concerns of this congregation, remembering this week especially, Lorna Ahn, Allen, Marion Barnes, Beatrice Blaine, Mary Bluen, Elise Byron, Lisa Cadwalder, Max Casbo, Frank Chang, Terry Choi, Scott Christensen, Clayton, Sandra Davidson, Nick DeGroot, Susie DeGroot, Loretta Fong, Peter Freeman, Susan Freeman, Gil Gleason, Cookie Green, Stacey Halverson, Jennifer Heron, Ira Hicks, Allison Hogan, Fiona Joyce, Catherine Cott, Kim Lilliquist, Mary Lim Lampy, Sam McElvain, Jim McElvain's brother, Lara Pierpoint and the Pierpoint Ware family, the Storer, Cole, and Lambert families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, remembering especially Bernard, Bernard Siegel, Marion Bertotti, Terry Choi, Ernest Nell, Bob Middleton, and Rogers, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now the concluding call. Dear Lord, thank you for your abundant blessings, including doubt. Please guide us and grant us perspective. Together we journey with few, if any, guideposts. We're often overwhelmed by confusion 
anxiety, and aggravation. Help us pause and recognize all we have. In this time of suffering, direct our hearts to see those in need, whether close at hand or on the other side of the world. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Hi, everyone. I Peace. see you, Hassler. Wow, Jimmy. <laughs> wow. Hi, Mom. Hi, June. Hi, Hi. Just give her your coffee. You know she wants her coffee. Just let her have it. <laughs> Peter, hello. time for announcements. <laughs> You've all been looking forward to this part. Um, I do want to remind people that uh, as a continuation of our Earth Day uh, uh, celebrations and awareness, uh, as we mentioned last week, we will be discussing the film, The Human Element, which is quite the exceptional film. Um, and we're going to be doing that today at 5 p.m. The link for that conversation is in your Friday email. Uh, we hope you will join us. And uh, uh, the, the movie, if you haven't watched it, is about, uh, I think it's about an hour and 15 minutes, about 75 minutes. Uh, so it's not a long one. If you would like to watch that, you can find it uh, through the links. Or you can reach out to me. Um, also, I want to alert you that you will be receiving an invitation this week. Uh, we are uh, just about ready to launch our cottage meetings. These are going to be in this format, the Zoom format, and they will be in groups no larger than 12. And we're going to open up 12 time segments for you to choose what will work for you. And once one is filled up, it's closed. So uh, we don't want them any larger than 12. Uh, the reason being is part of the cottage meeting will be to uh, uh, kind of connect together. In fact, we have the capacity to break down into small groups within the Zoom. It's really a, a wonderful aspect of this technology. Uh, John will be running the technology of these groups as we meet um, and we will have uh, an opportunity also in these meetings, not just to touch base, but also to uh, learn uh, more, hear more, listen more about where the church is right now, what's happening at St. John's, um, uh, everything that we're continuing to do with our ministries, uh, with our budget, with our outreach programs. And also we want to hear from you as we begin to formulate a strategy about what uh, that strategy would look like in terms of coming back together, uh, whether it would have phases, when those that coming back together would be, etc. 
we want to be extremely careful. We, we've, we've erred on the side of, of caution when it comes to the health of all of you. Uh, but we would love to hear some of your thoughts and desires as well. These meetings will uh, be short because we plan to have them occasionally. Um, so they'll be about 45 minutes long. Just about the length of this service. <laughs> um, so we look forward to you having uh, an opportunity to sign up and to, to, to come together. Um, John and I will be at every meeting. So we look forward to, to, to seeing all of you. Are there any birthdays? anniversaries or transitions please speak up or unmute yourself hi scott um it's my birthday on wednesday it's franny oh franny all right and it was my birthday what day was it thursday happy birthday franny all right nancy Coe. And, uh, bob and i just had our uh 14th anniversary on wednesday fantastic happy anniversary ginger my birthday on oh. tuesday who's that John. Uh, oh, hey. <laughs> okay. Pierce. Happy birthday. And um, can I mention my transition? Yes, you may. Sorry, I'm, I can't thank you enough for all of the thoughts and prayers and love. It has been so helpful to me. Okay. I'm expecting to be uh, transferred maybe tomorrow to a rehab facility. And I am on the mend and I'm expecting to make a full recovery. That's Thank you, bless you all. Wonderful news, Peter. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Uh, Scott, I wonder if you could uh, include my mom, Mary Bluin. She's turning 90 tomorrow and she's in a nursing home and she doesn't have uh, access to Zoom like this. So, um, and she's being prayed for every Sunday. So thanks everyone for that. Fantastic. Thank you for mentioning that, Marianne. All right. Let us gather all of these prayers together. Loving God, you have heard these moments of transition, of challenge, of celebration that each of us have shared. We pray, watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall, and in their hearts, may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God grant them many years, God grant them many years, God let us pray our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. For the blessing today, I would like to start with a quote from Barbara Brown Taylor in her comments about the Sermon on the Mount. She said this, maybe Jesus was simply blessing the ones around him that day who didn't otherwise receive blessing, 
who had come to believe that for them, blessings would never be in the cards for them. I mean, come on, doesn't that just sound like something Jesus would do? Extravagantly throwing around blessings as though they grew on trees. So I imagine Jesus standing among us offering some new beatitudes. Blessed are the agnostics. Blessed are they who doubt. Those who aren't sure, who can still be surprised. Blessed are they who are spiritually impoverished and therefore not too certain about everything, that they no longer take in new information. And I add, blessed are you who find yourself at an, an event horizon. May the overwhelming gravitation of a perfect love, which casts, casts out all fear, draw you in. And may the blessing of God, who has many names, but who is bound by none, be with you now and forever. Amen. Go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you to St. John. Good to see you guys. Bye. 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 See you all. Bye, Janine. Bye. Goodbye. Hello, Ray. Bye. Steve. Bye. Hello, Jim. Bye. 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 B